Okay, I'm going to have to mute uh, area code 804. And I can hear the paper rattling from area code 347. So, uh, Patrick, you asked about Ray in the bank. What? You asked about Ray in the bank. Well, I asked about Ray, whether the bank or anything like that, uh, or he's trying to go to the bankruptcy court or what? Well, yeah, we're working on getting him the documents for the bankruptcy court. He's he's in a tough situation with only the Android, and it's hard to prepare documents, but he does work on that. Uh, but he, he went to the bank again, and he found out that the guy he was talking to got moved to another branch. He hasn't, he hasn't found out where he is yet. Don't know whether he did it because he was penalized or helping Ray out or whether just something else came up. So I told him to try to look up the guy's phone number in the, in the white pages and see if you can get a hold of him anywhere. They see, yeah, trying to move him out so basically that guy doesn't understand what's going on in the banking system, okay? Well, he'd been talking with Ray. He didn't know everything about the banking system. Well, what he had said to Ray is he he had talked to Ray over the years about this, and he told Ray that he'd like this to work because he'll do it for himself. Yeah, that's what the problem is, okay? He would try and do it for himself, then he wouldn't need the bank. Yeah. That's what the bank is saying. Hey, they don't want to lose the employee. They want to control that employee, too. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. That's probably why yeah. they moved them. Yes. So and that's what they will do in a lot of cases with the court, in some regards, is they will move them out so that they... Do not lose control over the people and also over the employees that they have working there. All right. I had two people come up and see me today, and uh, one of them basically uh, she went in on uh, talked to her parole officer and used admiralty. Now, there is an admiralty jurisdiction under that one document, Admiralty Extension Act, extended the admiralty into the state courts. Uh Okay. I didn't fully read it and catch that before. Nobody else out here reads any of these documents that I post up and caught it either. Hmm. But it's under the Admiralty Extension Act, which has extended Admiralty into the state courts systems, giving the people the right, the people's court within the state. Hmm. To where you can turn around and sue the state employees, uh, police officers or whatever, if they cause you harm. Clerks of the court, if they don't file your documents, whatever. Hmm. You need to look at that one document there that basically was by that pastor strandering and go over those first two pages. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Right. There are seven different ways that basically the states and all these courts lose uh, immunity in the process, covered by these acts. Once the bill of lading, and a bill of lading can be documented by a fax delivery. And 
they try and normally say, oh, no, we got to have a uh, wet ink signature. Well, that's in Admiralty, basically, or in Maritime, they need to have that. But if you've got a document that you sent to them by electronic fax, that's covered under also under that electronic uh, delivery of 1990, in the 1990s, that act. But anyway, this woman basically had, and she wasn't supposed to be able to leave her county. She was on parole. And I told her to go in there and tell that damn parole officer that she's moving it into admiralty jurisdiction and that she wanted to know how much the payoff was. Because then she could turn around and take the payoff for that item and submit it into the bankruptcy court to do a set-off from the insurance policy, the maritime or marine insurance policy that is being covered by that certificate of live birth document. That's our protections. They don't have those contracts out in front of you but they're there, and you have to go into the bankruptcy court and force their hand underneath these insurance claims. Now, the chief judge for the federal district is also the chief courthouse curator. You need to go into Ballantyne's Dictionary and read what it says about a curator. In Roman law, he was a man of the Roman civil laws. And in Roman civil law, it covered both admiralty and maritime laws. That's really, out here, is really the two jurisdictions you have, is admiralty and maritime. Just and unjust. Mm. Civil and criminal are just parts of those items. That is not the law. The law is basically how you have to pay. If you harm somebody, you're going to be in admiralty. And it's going to be the injured party against the party that did the injuring. Unless you come to some restitution outside of the court. All other stuff is basically that goes into maritime law. They break it down into criminal or uh, civil. Most of the time, they try and hold it in criminal out there because of your bastardly child. But your bastardly child is dead now. He's post-orbit. They're not supposed to be holding our stuff in captivity any longer. See, we've got to break this stuff down, and we've got to start fighting. You've got to get mad, like the movie Network said. Until you get mad, you're not going to see the light of day, because you're still asleep. You're still in a trance. Just like the movie Now You See Me 
had a hypnosis person in there. The whole country's in a state of mass hypnosis, believing that they've got to have this damn stinking insurance, that they've got to have a driver's license, that they've got to have this, because otherwise we would just have mass chaos. Well, that's total bullshit. More accidents happen when they are restrained than by being allowed to be free. You restrain something, basically, you're going to have something break out. You pack too many things into a corral, basically, overcrowding. Pushing something out. That's chaos when that happens. But if you have the freedom of Rome, basically, then it will take care of itself because you're not going to overgraze a pasture or something. You're going to go to where the grass is green. And keep moving. No. When there's when they lock you down and start putting restraints on you, that is the chaos in actuality. So, you need to go back through the definitions, understand what they mean. I said before that basically they're holding our assets as heritable items. We haven't inherited them yet because we haven't brought them into port. Just like the Court of Claims told one guy down in South Carolina, you're still out at sea. You haven't come into port. Yeah, Patrick, I, I found this was a document you're talking about with uh, Pastor Standring. Uh, Actually, I didn't post it. It was a uh, link, URL link that you sent in, but I will, I will post it. The whole HTML file. So why are we in the Admiralty jurisdiction? Yes. Okay, I will post that. And they see there's it covers seven different items down there. Under uh, about uh, five different acts. Okay. Well, the first act has three sections to it, to where the they all, uh, the states and the courts and everybody else, uh, loses their immunities. They try and claim that the state is immune from being uh, uh, sued. Well, that's bullshit. If they do something wrong, they have the right to be sued. And these documents address that. It's just that you have to get them into admiralty to be able to do it. You get a traffic ticket. You sign anything. You sign it in Admiralty. Underneath your signature, you put in Admiralty. That's what they don't want to see, is that. The 
because now you've placed that document into admiralty jurisdiction. This admiralty is bigger than what you, how you guys really think or, and know it is, okay? A couple of us have touched on this in previous items, and that's why in a lot of cases we're standing that basically they haven't come after us. For well over two years, I haven't paid any traffic tickets that are overdue for about two years. Overdue. But I would, if I got a ticket, I'd just sign it, my name, and then sign in Admiralty. When that ticket goes into the court, they're not going to be able to do a damn thing with it. Because all their traffic violations are not against the Admiralty. They are against the fiction. They're in maritime. One other thing in Admiralty. Whether you know it or not. There can be no bar attorneys in Admiralty. Mm -hmm. No one that has a bar card can come into that court. They have to renounce that bar card in Admiralty. They have to come in under their own cognizance. Because only a bar member can operate in maritime law, but they can't operate in admiralty law. And that's why the courts and everything else don't want you in admiralty, because they don't get a cut of you, a whaling of you, in admiralty. They can't whale you, cut strips of blubber away from you. Ever since I brought that up about whaling, talked to a couple people, and they're starting to come up with more and more movies that basically have had the word whaling in the movie. Said, just in the movie itself, it was sort of odd that that word was used in that movie. But yet, they remember it being there. The people walk around in a state of hypnosis, and then they want to look at all the codes, and they don't see what they need to see in the codes, and then they try and use the codes for their defense. The codes are not our law, but our law is hidden. Our admiralty protections, in some cases, are hidden within their codes. But they're not going to come out and give you those protections in those codes. Just like in Title 46, it exempts a whole bunch of stuff about fishing, whaling, and yachts. Fishing vessels are basically like tractors on a farm on the land. 
That fishing vessel is the tractor on the sea farm for harvesting fish. The tractor helps harvest the corn on land. Everybody is a farmer in a way out here. And they destroyed the family farms in this country big time. Because that was the backbone of the country and they wanted to destroy the backbone. The whaling vessels, why would that even be mentioned in Title 46? We haven't had a whaling vessel in this country, an actual physical whaling vessel out on the oceans, since back in the prior to 1960s even. There may have been one or two, but basically then we signed into the U.N. Treaty that basically we would not do any more whaling. So where's the whaling vessels? Well, the whaling vessels they're talking about is the commercial whaling vessels going after the mammals of the commercial seas of commerce. The man and woman whales because they're mammals too. And then yachts are normally private vessels that are not under their jurisdiction. They're not under maritime, not under the merchant laws. They're not merchant vessels. They're not warring vessels. They're private. That's what I mean. You've got to look at these things and put reality into place. Does it have logic, as Mr. Spock would say? Mm-hmm. You hit these guys up with these documents that I put out here, and sooner or later, we're going to start cracking through the door. Now, since I found this out about the state courts having admiralty, we can turn around and go back to the state court and put that claim into the state court with that certificate of live birth. and put it in Admiralty and claim that. We might as well hit them at every damn door there is. They had to walk around Jericho seven times tooting on their damn horn before the damn walls ever came tumbling down. Moses had to go to the Pharaoh's court how many damn times before he finally cracked the damn thing? Daniel, basically all the trials and tribulations that he went through. Jesus, how many different courts did he have to go to? How many times had he been into the temple trying to resolve things? I tried to lay out the groundwork, but basically he was no smarter than you or I. He had to try is damned us to get through that damn door.
So if you don't want to put the effort in and get out there and try and fight for this, well, basically, I'm sorry. But you're not going to get shit. I've given you about as much guidance as I can give you out of a damn process. The rest of it's up to you. You've got to start thinking for yourself. I can't think for you anymore. The documents are there. You can modify them for every situation you need. I told you about the B-10 form. You can turn around and take that B-10 form and put a claim in as a creditor for all the receipts payment that you paid out of your back pocket. You would attach a... uh, checkmate document that I have posted up there and some of the other references, like for the DD-214, you would put a checkmate attached to that. You would take the receipts and you would put a check mark on them, checking them off, and then signing them. Nothing puts fancy or anything. Just a simple good check mark and basically a signature. And then basically, you should put it like a invoice, a bill of lading invoice or something, adding all those up. And I've had the the template for uh, those up there before too. Excel file or whatever. So you add those up. So you have an invoice slash bill of lading, your B-10 form to where the company that you bought the stuff from is the debtor, you're the creditor, and then you have a check mate that goes along with it. You'll have to take off the conversion factor off of that because You paid one Federal Reserve dollar for that, and you're going to get one Federal Reserve dollar back. You do this with everything you've got. You can do this with the banks. Now, on the checks for the banks, you have to use a little logic there because basically on the checks that you wrote with the bank, the dollar sign stands for Federal Reserve notes where the word dollar, when you write out the value, stands for silver dollars. Now, you're going to have to take into account the conversion factor in that process and subtract the difference in the process. And then you submit that into the bankruptcy court and let them basically go in and do the hairlets of it. Mm. Hairlets or whatever. Period. H-E-R-I-O-T-S. Cut away the fat and give you back the just. And like I said, heritable means that it is capable of being inherited, but you haven't inherited it yet. It's just sitting there, but it's sitting out at sea. You have to bring it in port to inherit it. To put the IN in front of inheritance. You 
they're no longer under an apprenticeship or a journeymanship. So basically, your bastardly child is in a post state of post orbit. Now, if you go into the state court system and submit this in in admiralty, you had better reference the Admiralty Extension Act when you do that. That I'm coming in in Admiralty in the state per the Admiralty Extension Act. Okay. Anybody got any questions, comments, or anything? I, I just found it, I found it interesting. I just found that this document we will talk about, that uh, we, why we are in the Admiralty jurisdiction, is actually in the U.S. USCourts.gov in one of their library sites. They, they converted it to a PDF, and they have it there. It's a, filed into the court system. Okay. So what's your point? Well, that, that it looks like the courts are recognizing it to some extent by, by putting it there. Well, is that a government site or is that just uh, somebody else's site? No, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a government site, LIB7 for, I guess, library for District 7, LIB7.uscourts.gov. If you Google the title, okay, this, this Pastor Strandling uh, basically has submitted quite a few things into different courts, okay. especially in the tax courts. Well, it's obviously and he won current... quite a few cases, so basically, it probably is a case precedent in there. Okay. Well, it has the Freedom School uh, URL at the top of the PDF, and on every page it says visited on three twenty two thousand and thirteen. I don't understand what it's all about. I just found it odd that it was there. Same document? Same document. I'll have to check it. There may be a couple of more links on the on the bottom. I'll, I'll go through it carefully. But the, the first page is exactly the same. Okay. I'll post it up on the site there then. Yes, I will. I've already, got the, I've already got the HTML up there, but I'll do the PDF, too. Go ahead with your question. Someone had go a ahead. question, go ahead and ask it. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you were talking about the Bill of Lading and the facts, and in this Admiralty document it says that they submit a Bill of Lading with all of their lawsuits. Is that something we should be doing as well, or is it the facts itself that's the Bill of Lading? Well, basically, in some cases... You need to understand what a bill of lading is. It's telling you what is attached to the document. Mm -hmm. Okay? Any, anything can be basically classified as a bill of lading. If you really look at all the different definitions about bill of lading, okay? So go into the dictionaries and uh, reference all the different uh, Valentines, Bouviers, Blacks, all the different items about Bill of Ladies. Put them all down on one sheet until you fully understand what uh, basically a Bill of Lading is all about. You don't need to just reference the maritime version of what a Bill of Lading is because that's going to be strictly in maritime law. 
under the UCCs or uh, uh, whatever the hell. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had another question. I had a situation where I went into court and I said that this is an admiralty and I'm the living and I need to be an admiralty. And I got a piece of mail back and the judge said he was denying the defendant's request to move it to admiralty. Um, you're what? You're, you're what? The judge just sent me a ma- some mail saying that he was denying the defendant's request to move it to admiralty. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I gave the wrong impression that I was... Yeah, you got to understand that basically you are the admiralty, okay? Mm-hmm. You as the living are the admiralty, and that yeah. you are coming in in admiralty in the vice court. Uh-huh. So okay. we don't have to we don't have to move it into admiralty. We're already in admiralty. We are. The court is not. Okay. Okay, that's the problem. The court is standing in maritime. They want to keep it in maritime. Right. So double talk. Right. And you have to say, hey, I can only be in this court in admiralty. There has to be someone that has I have harmed in this process. Otherwise, there is no charge against me. I am the pawn or, okay? You're after the pawnee. Your insurance contract is with the pawnee in maritime law. Now, the codes and everything else are in maritime law. They are not for the admiralty. They cannot impose restrictions upon you in your freedom of travel. In Admiralty, they can only place their regulations and their uh, whatever on to the person that is in maritime, and that is your Pawnee. because he's under that marine or maritime insurance contract that they are concealing from you. And as a fraudulent concealment, in insurance fraud. You start bringing up insurance fraud in there and about the maritime and marine insurance contract, into the process, and you'll start blowing them right out of the water. It's like they just hit a landmine or an ocean mine or whatever you want to call it. You need to get trickier than they are, okay? They're pretty tricky, but you can start weighing your minds out there that basically will blow them out of the water if they hit them. Okay, any other questions, comments, rebuttals?
Yeah, I have Something. a question. Okay, go ahead. Last time when we talked about this, uh, why we are in the Admiralty document, you said that we are to ignore all the stuff about uh, the UPU and that kind of thing. I guess that still applies. Is that right? Yeah. We don't need the UCC, okay? No, UPU. You, know. you, you don't use that in Admiralty. That's all in maritime law. Okay. No, it was the UPU. Yeah, UPU, too, okay? Universal Postal Union. Postal. AL. That's uh, in the dead world. You want the post office. So half the stuff, like all these registered mails and certified mailings, they're under the... They're a copyrighted under the postal U.S. UPS system, the United States postal system. If it was under the post office system, it wouldn't be copyrighted. That's why in some cases you're best off just to do a certificate of mailing. You assign the number. But you get the post office to put a postage on that, and it'll cost you about a dollar thirty to do a certificate of mailing. And the post office is guaranteeing that that will be delivered. It won't be tracked or anything, but it will have a statement that it, and basically the post office guarantees delivery of everything that they take in. So if need be, you could bring them into court and they'd have to say, we delivered that. Hmm. Because you paid them to say that. But yeah, all that stuff about the UPU and all that other stuff, it never got us anywhere. And I don't know how many thousands of dollars I went through on that damn garbage. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? I do have a question. Okay. Uh, the other day you said that we don't fill out bankruptcy forms. So you're saying we don't fill out the B-10 form? No, we fill out the B-10 form, okay? Okay. We, okay. That's the only form that we need to fill out because that's the creditor's claim form. But okay. we're filling it out, putting a charge against the debtor. Okay, we're not coming in as the debtor in this bankruptcy. We're coming in as the creditor to file a claim against them, to give them form. See, we have to give form to the debtor. That's the only reason why we fill that form out. And that's the only reason why you ever do any forms is to give form to something that does not have form. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that all makes a lot of sense, and it's really helpful. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay, no other questions? It's not. Okay, call, call tonight, Tom. Thank, thank you, Patrick. Okay. This is very, very useful, though. Thank you. Okay, later.